It's time for members' statements. Member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On April 24th, when asked if a Conservative government would kill the Ontario Basic Income Pilot, party officials said, and I quote, nope, we look forward to seeing the results. While it took only a few short weeks before the Conservatives got used to breaking their promises to the people, at its core, basic income is the right to self-determination beyond circumstance, and that is a powerful idea. Ontarians who participated in the pilot have said that it was life-changing. Dave Cherkuski of Hamilton lived in poverty for 10 years before this pilot. Now he's able to afford fresh, healthy food, and his anxiety has been curbed. Another recipient named Jody said, basic income has given me the security I need to help relieve the stress of our everyday lives. But I can see why this government of the few is only for only the few. If they were to truly empower the many, including those families partaking in this pilot, their mandate would be short indeed. I would remind the members opposite that the last premier to cancel a basic income pilot was defeated shortly thereafter. When you slash income and resources for the impoverished and the vulnerable, while also pledging to cut taxes for the rich and the powerful, it is obvious who this government actually stands for. I urge this government to show some compassion, to live up to all of your promises, and reverse Thank you. this Thank you. Decision. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Mr. Speaker, Etobicoke Lakeshore's version of Mardi Gras, which was inspired by the New Orleans famous Mardi Gras, kicks off this Friday, August the 3rd, and runs throughout the weekend. Lakeshore Mardi Gras will be celebrating their 15th year in the community, and we're expecting this year to be bigger and better than ever before. Visitors will have the opportunity to join, uh, enjoy great live music, which will include bands like, and hopefully you all remember, 5440, Rick Emmett, and Resolution 9. <laughs> the festival will also have great food vendors with amazing assortment of delicious carnival-style treats which children will love and adults who are children will, at heart will love even more. And of course, no carnival or summertime event would be complete without a beer garden. In addition to great music, there will be dazzling displays of entertainment such as buskers, clown shows and much, much more. The open atmosphere, natural park setting, beautiful Lake Ontario shoreline, and beautiful sunny skies is what makes Tobacco Lakeshore such an inviting community to spend time in during the summer months. Of course, great events are only made possible with organizations and community involvement. I would like to sincerely thank the organizations and the volunteer committees and the generous community sponsors who are supporting Lakeshore Mardi Gras. Come out to Colonel Samuel Smith Park in Etobicoke Lakeshore this weekend. It's for everyone, younger people, older people, singles, couples and families. The food is great, the music is great, and we're expecting some great Etobicoke Lakeshore summer weather. Hope to see you there. For statements, the member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Today I want to talk about a safety issue in the community of Dowling in my riding of Nickel Belt. In Dowling, the Larchwood Public School, the library, the community centre, the ball field, the ice rink, you get the idea, are on one side of Highway 144. The houses where the people live are on the other side of the highway. For many years, parents and residents have been worried about children having to cross Highway 144 to get to school or to go play. We contacted the Ministry of Transportation, who did a traffic study. The study showed clearly that this situation was too dangerous, and they agreed to build a crosswalk to make things safer. Two long years have now passed. School will start in a few weeks, and there is no sign of a crosswalk being built. My constituents are running out of patience. They have decided to take things into their own hands. They are planning a blockade of Highway 144, a major northern highway, on the first day of school. It, why do we have to come to that, Speaker? The Ministry of Transportation agree. What are they waiting for? The death of a child is too high of a price to pay for inaction. Those delays will never be tolerated anywhere else. I will never accept being treated as a second-class citizen because I choose to live in Northern Ontario. Minister, the safety of these children are in your hands. Please do the right thing. Build a crosswalk in dialing before our kids go back to school and before tragedy strikes. 
Member statements. The member from Milton. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with a heavy heart that I rise today to pay tribute to Milton's councillor, Mike Boughton, who passed away on Monday after a long battle with cancer. I know councillor Boughton represented War too proudly and helped make life better for many Miltonians. He was a very, very proud Miltonian and watched not only our town grow, but many of those that he helped work towards uh, in terms of making their lives better, Mr. Speaker, uh, right across Milton. And he was, a, he was the owner of a, a barber shop and very proudly served Miltonians for many, many years, Mr. Speaker. There is a very large void left in Milton Town Council, and I know he will be greatly missed. On behalf of all of my colleagues in this House, I want to take this opportunity to send our condolences to his family, friends, and fellow council members, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Statements. The member for Brampton Centre. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise here today in the House and acknowledge that as the first Indo-Caribbean woman elected to this parliament this weekend, we'll actually be celebrating Caribbean heritage in all its forms at Caravana. Uh, yes. So people from around the world, uh, over two million are expected to come to the city uh, to celebrate, dance, jump up and wave to soca music, reggae music and dance hall, which is really, really exciting. But let us not forget that this week we also celebrated Emancipation Day and Caribana is a reflection of slavery, which many folks in the Caribbean experienced and the emancipation from that. And Caribana stems as a celebration to acknowledge our Caribbean heritage and the diverse cultures we have. Uh, we will have people uh, from Trinidad, Tobago, Jamaica, St. Kitts, um, the Grenada, Guyana, as I am from, uh, celebrating and waving their flags with pride. And I hope that uh, on this long weekend we can all take an opportunity and participate uh, in celebrating Caribbean heritage and the diverse cultures that we have here in our communities. Unfortunately, due to a wedding, uh, which I'm really also very excited to announce, uh, my cousin's getting married to her long-term uh, fiancé, uh, and so I won't be able to jump and wave with my flag, but I'll be doing that at our reception, so I wanted to also congratulate them on their auspicious wedding. Thank you very much. Members' statements. Member for Scarborough Guildwood. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, today I would like to stand for the 4,000 people living in Thunder Bay, Lindsay, Hamilton, Brant Brantford, and Brant County, and the thousands of families in Scarborough and throughout Ontario receiving income supports from Ontario Works and ODSP, and who are going to be severely affected by the Premier's latest decision to scrap the basic income pilot project and the planned increase of 3 per cent to the people of Ontario, on Ontario Works and ODSP. Cancelling the basic income pilot project and reducing the planned increase by 1.5 per cent to people on Ontario Works and ODSP is not being compassionate nor is it for the people. Let me be clear, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative government is breaking their promises by cancelling the program that they said they would keep. The Conservative government is now instead dragging Ontario backwards by breaking their promises, crushing the hopes of people living with no basic income and those living on low income. Mr. Speaker, reducing poverty in Ontario does not work by decreasing the rates for Ontario's most disadvantaged and marginalized people, income that they depend on. Mr. Speaker, even Conservative Senator Hugh Seagal said that this is a horrific mistake and that he is embarrassed as a progressive Conservative. The pilot project was Ontario's way to gather our own evidence, that, and the Premier has destroyed that opportunity. The research suggests that this won't save any money, and in fact, it would further deteriorate people's health and well being, leaving them in poorer. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just steps away from the bustling intersection of Young and Eglinton is the hockey arena that has seen generations of aspiring athletes take to the ice. It is perhaps most well known as the home rink of uh, Hall of former Hall of Famer Hall of Famer Eric Lindros. And I'm speaking, of course, of the North Toronto Arena, which is located in my riding of Eglinton Lawrence. 
Uh, but these days, another professional hockey player is at the centre of attention in North Toronto. If you call the arena now, you will be greeted by a voicemail message that says, Thank you for calling North Toronto Arena, home rink of Stanley Cup champion Tom Wilson. Our community is rightfully proud of Tom Wilson, who long before winning the Stanley Cup as a member of the Washington Capitals, cut his teeth playing hockey at North Toronto Arena. In fact, my son Eric actually played with Tom Wilson on the North Toronto AA team. And Speaker, I am very happy to report that Tom Wilson is bringing the Stanley Cup home to Toronto this weekend, and I would like to invite all members of this House to join me in congratulating Tom Wilson and the Stanley Cup champions, the Washington Capitals. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Timmins. Well, Mr. Speaker, we'll all remember in the last election, as we led up to it, the uh, then leader of the uh, of the official opposition, Mr. Ford, said he was going to cancel the green belt. Remember that? He had a cozy little meeting with developers, and he says, "Don't worry, everybody, put your confidence in me. We'll just get rid of the green belt." Yep. Then all of a sudden, the public started to push away, yep. and as the public pushed away and said this was a bad idea because there was an election coming. And they knew that this was not very popular, and people want to protect the green belt. He says, no, no, I'm listening to the people. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Absolutely not. So what's the government's response and what's the premier's response? Let's get rid of city council. If you can reduce the amount of councillors at City Hall, it's the developers who are going to control what goes on at that City Hall. It's not going to be the people. This will be all about redeveloping the green belt according to what Doug Ford and developers want to do, and it's a real sinister way. And ask the member to refer to the Premier by his parliamentary title. Premier? Isn't that what I used? Anyways, I apologize. So I say again, the Premier is pretty clear what he's up to. This is all about attacking the green belt and doing development in a way that takes people out of the decision of what should be developed. Mr. Speaker, it's our land, it's our city, and the people have to be at the centre of all of the decisions. And for the Premier to say, no, I want to put my friends there so we can redevelop the green belt and do what we want is wrong, and we're not a bunch of fishes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is my first time speaking in the legislature as the MPP for Don Valley North. Speaker, it is an honor and a privilege that the residents of Don Valley North have placed their trust in me. I want to thank all the volunteers in my, on my campaign and I also want to thank my wife, Chang Hong, and my son, Han, for their love and support as I began my new position. <laughs> my constituents are happy to see our government for people has kept its promises. We have legislation to cancel the cap and trade program. We have passed the legislation to end the longest post the secondary education strike at the York University. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the board of Heiser One has resigned, and we are going to undertake the largest public consultation regarding the sex education curriculum starting in the fall. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to serving the residents of Don Valley North as their member of provincial parliament. Thank you for for giving me the opportunity to speak before the House today. <laughs> member Statements, the member for Carleton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. July 31st marked the beginning of the 2018 Special Olympics in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. Hundreds of athletes are competing to qualify for the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi. With over 260 athletes competing, Team Ontario is the largest team by far at the Games. Mr. Speaker, I was pleased to receive a letter from Mr. Glenn McDonnell, President and CEO of Special Olympics Ontario, highlighting two of Team Ontario's athletes that just happen to live in my riding of Carleton. Emily Byrne will be competing in the sport of rhythmic gymnastics, and Christian Schofield will be competing in the sport of swimming. 
I am always pleased to hear about the accomplishments of the people I have the privilege of representing here at the Legislature. Emily Byrne and Christian Schofield are an inspiration to our community, and I am proud to have them represent us as part of Team Ontario. Mr. Speaker, I want to wish them, as well as all the athletes across Ontario, all the best during this competition. No matter the outcome, they are already winners and champions here at home. I look forward to meeting Emily and Christian upon their return, congratulating them in person, and sharing in the celebration that recognizes their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements time this afternoon. Report